Thanks for spending your Saturday with us. I'm Matt Holzaffel. Our top story this evening, emergency crews responding to a wildfire just south of Helena. The fire started in the Lump Gulch area near Sheep Mountain. The Montana Department of Natural Resources, Conservation, along with other agencies are responding to the blaze. As of about 4 p.m., the fire is estimated to have burned about 50 acres as moving northeast thanks to high winds. We're actually going to get a live shot here from our Opportunity Bank ICAM in Helena. Emergency crews are asking anyone who is currently in the immediate surrounding area to evacuate. As of right now, no structures have been damaged. According to the Clancy Volunteer Fire Department, Park Lake residents are being notified by Forest Service. The fire is heading in that direction. A Red Cross shelter has been set up at the La Quinta Inn in Helena for anyone affected by the fire. The cause of the fire is still unknown and we have a reporter on the scene. We'll update you as we get more information. Montana saw 15 new cases of coronavirus today. That's the largest single day spike since April 9th. Five of those cases coming out of Gallatin County and three out of Lake County. None of those reported cases were in either Cascade or Lewis and Clark County. That brings the total number of cases in the Treasure State to 588. Montana still has the lowest number of cases in the country, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Well, five people are dead after a two-vehicle crash near Box Elder in Shoto County last night. The Montana Highway Patrol was notified of the crash at about 8.35 p.m. It happened along Duck Creek Road near the intersection with Upper Box Elder Road. According to the Montana Highway Patrol, a northbound vehicle went off the road. The driver then tried to correct back to the left, causing the car to go into a sideways slide. The car then collided with another car in the southbound lane. The MHP has not released the names of the people involved at this time, but said the victims include two 30-year-olds, a 26-year-old, a 5-year-old girl, and a 5-year-old boy, 8-year-old girl, excuse me. All are said to be from Box Elder. According to the MHP, alcohol and speed are believed to be factors in the crash. The investigation is ongoing and we'll up to you when we get more information. Well, some Montanans are experiencing thunderstorms and windy conditions. Our Storm Tracker weather team is here to tell you more. Grant Garland joins us now. Grant? Exactly right, Matt. We are looking at a few thunderstorms right now impacting uh, some locations, especially up towards Cutbank. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. We are seeing uh, multiple showers and thunderstorms. Going to go ahead and zoom in on this one right here. It is impacting folks north of Stanford, in and around Stanford, and east of Fort Benton. Also, we're looking at up towards Cutbank, looking at several showers and thunderstorms that are that are moving in and around the area, and this is going to be continuing throughout the evening. We do have a chance for some severe weather, looking at scattered showers and thunderstorms possibly becoming severe up towards Cutbank, and the main threats will be damaging wind gusts up to half dollar sized hail and frequent lightning. Now, Great Falls, Haver, Hayes and Glasgow, we are not under a medium risk. We are under a low risk for showers and thunderstorms with the isolated severe thunderstorm. Now, as far as our winds are concerned, it has been a very windy day. Southwest winds are at 15 miles an hour in Great Falls at a 35 miles an hour in Helena with some gust in Helena close to 50 miles an hour. So we have really been feeling uh, the windy conditions elsewhere. We're looking at uh, for our temperatures 84 degrees in Great Falls, 84 as well as in Helena, a little bit warmer in Lewistown 87 and a little bit warmer there in Fort Benton at 88. Now cooler temperatures, they are on their way for the short term forecast. I'll have those details and more coming up in a few minutes. But for now, Matt, back to you, sir. All right, you heard Grant mention those strong winds in Helena. Those blew to be a contributing factor to the movement of the fire. We'll keep you updated as we get more information. A new dress code at one Butte daycare has caused some controversy as of late. m John Amy talked to the daycare owner about this issue that has some people upset. When the owner of Spirited Roots Daycare in Butte started a new dress code policy banning clothing with messages she believes are divisive, the blowback was strong. It's been mad. It's been totally crazy. The policy includes banning shirts with images of guns, build the wall, the thin blue line, or glorifying the military and police. Many people posted critical messages about the daycare's policy and called for a boycott of the business. She claims some of the posts contained indirect threats. I have seen people um, commenting things like, I just want to see her face. I just want to know what she looks like. Let me catch her in public. I exercise my Second Amendment right. Moved by the recent Black Lives Matter protest, Crooker said she wants her business to promote love and inclusivity. As long as people of color 
in this country are being disproportionately arrested and disproportionately incarcerated and disproportionately murdered, um, I, I, I won't stop and I'm not going to back down from the policy. And it's not that I'm against the police force at all. I, I do think that we need a police force, but I do think that it needs to be altered. Along with all the negative feedback the owner of this daycare has received, she also says she's received a lot of positive support. I've, I've honestly had an outpouring of love and respect and people just, you know, stepping up and sending me messages of support, which has been huge for me. Um, I honestly am surprised by it. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Well, Alluvian Health in Great Falls held a garage sale this morning to raise money for Alluvian Gives. The garage sale was meant to help meet patient needs and raise money for the creation of a new hygiene pantry. All items at the sale were donated by staff and others and sold at affordable prices. Maria Gro is the care coordinator at Alluvian Health. She said she enjoys being part of a place that gives back. I love my job working at Alluvian Health, being able to help people who do need those things and, you know, being able to give it to them at a discounted price and all the money that we're raising to help them in the long run. Alluvian Gives is a staff-run committee comprised of Alluvian Healthcare Coordinators that works to meet patient needs, including connecting resources to partner organizations and housing and food insecurities. The month of June was chosen for LGBTQ plus Pride Month to commemorate the Stonewall Riots, which occurred at the end of June 1969. This year, though, Pride marches and events in Montana look a bit different thanks to the coronavirus pandemic. Here's MTN's Jordan Johnson with more. Pride Month is usually marking the celebration of the LGBT plus community with parades and various celebrations. But this year, those events are canceled due to the coronavirus. But the Western Montana Community Center is wanting people to show their resiliency as well as allowing others to embrace their true selves with a giveaway of rainbow masks. Yeah, this project has really exploded, uh, which is great. David Herrera is the director of the Montana Gay Health Task Force and a board member of the center and says that they expected to donate 200 masks, but now they are projected to give away 1,200 masks by the end of June. Herrera says that Pride Month to him means the remembrance of the Stonewall riots of June 1969 and how far society has come. You know, really, to me, uh, it's about uh, liberation. It's about the, the need to, to not be ashamed, to not uh, live your life in fear, um, to proclaim, you know, for ourselves that we are um, human beings just like everybody else and deserve the exact same rights that everybody else has. But there's still room for growth, Herrera says. Definitely there's a lot of work that still needs to happen um, with regards to homophobia, racism, transphobia. Despite the coronavirus canceling many Pride events, like Big Sky Pride, Herrera says it won't stop the center's outreach. It's, even though that's not happening, we're not, you know, letting it stop us from trying to communicate, you know, uh, an important message during this, th this month. The Gay Health Task Force and the Two-Spirit Society are collaborating with the center at the end of June for a free testing event. In Missoula, Jordan Johnson, MTN News. We'll kick update on that fire before we go to break. We told you about 50 acres. Officials now saying due to high winds and low visibility, they're not able to make an estimate on how many acres the fire is currently consumed. And we'll keep you updated as we learn more. Coming up, hundreds of people came out for the fifth annual Kite Day in Shelby. This afternoon, we'll show you some of the best kites after the break. By the Montana Television Network. The 5.30 News continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. The Montana Department of Environmental Quality issued a do not drink order on Friday for the water supply in West Yellowstone, an order that continued into today. MTN's Gabby Kraut was in West Yellowstone all day and she has the latest. Now, as you can see behind me, the line has died down quite a bit, but starting at 930 this morning, Town Hall here in West Yellowstone was filled with cars and they were all here to pick up cases of bottled water after the Department of Environmental Quality announced last night that the town's water supply is currently not drinkable for people. We oh, can't get a break. It's 2020. What's going to happen in July? Everything's going to be fine is what's going to happen after we get through this. On Friday evening, the town of West Yellowstone and the Gallatin City County Health Department announced the town's primary water source, known as the Whiskey Springs Collection Area, was damaged. In the meantime, the DEQ issued a no drink order. 
So we test our water source once a week and send them in. And it's, it's, it's just the rules. And, uh, and when I say fail, it just means it had a bacteria of some sort in it. The town staff and their families spent Saturday morning distributing a semi truck full of bottled water coming from Lurkins in Bozeman. And it came in on the alert system, which I didn't, didn't think would be working on my phone. And uh, so that worked out well. They're doing a great job here for West Yellowstone. Restaurants and other food establishments were told to suspend operations by the Gallatin City County Health Department. Hotels and motels were told they could continue operating, but must use bottled water for consumption. Another round of water tests took place early Saturday morning. The town of West Yellowstone says it's an ongoing investigation and continue to wait for more results. They can only test so fast. We got the, the state to open up their lab. We were able to, you know, get those up there. We're working as fast as we can. I'm told by officials here in West Yellowstone that they will continue distributing cases of bottled water as needed. There's also a water truck on site filled with potable water that people can fill up at their convenience. Reporting in West Yellowstone, Gabby Crevett, MTN News. And a spokesperson from the Montana DEQ told MTN the water had traces of coliform bacteria, which according to their website, is a broad class of bacteria found in the environment, including human feces and other warm-blooded animals. Well, kites were flying high this, in the sky this afternoon in Shelby, sponsored by Shelby Kiwanis. The annual Shelby Kite Festival is a free, family-friendly celebration for our most abundant resource, wind. This is the fifth year the festival has taken place. M10 spoke with Jack Witter, the chairman of the Kite Festival. He says that flying a kite brings you back to your, to your childhood. Fun reminds you, brings you back to your childhood and and getting them up and seeing how high you can get them. And depending, there's so many styles of kites. You can do acrobatics. You can do, you know, kite wars if you wanted to. Um, and it's just good, wholesome family entertainment. They told MTN over 300 people showed up to this year's event. Well, don't go away. I'll have a look at your full seven-day forecast coming up after this break. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you have had a fantastic start to your weekend. We have been looking at a lot of showers and thunderstorms uh, for, our, for our viewing area. So heads up, we are looking at quite the rumble of thunder, especially out towards Geraldine, north of Stanford, looking at a lot of lightning strikes here. Also, as we head on out towards our folks in Cutbank, also Browning, looking at showers and thunderstorms that have been making their way towards Canada. And these have the potential to become severe as we head into the next couple couple of hours due to the ingredients in the atmosphere needed to be able to make severe thunderstorms. We're seeing that we're looking at a medium chance for scattered severe thunderstorms possible for our friends up in Cutbank, looking at the main threats being damaging wind gust up to half dollar sized hail and well as uh, frequent lightning. Now for us in the electric city as well as Haver and uh, Hayes and Glasgow, we are looking at a low chance for an isolated uh, severe thunderstorm. It's not out of the realm possibilities, but we do have a lower chance than those in and around Cutbank. Temperatures right now in Great Falls, 84 degrees. Lewistown 87 out towards Fort Benton, just a little bit warmer at 88 degrees. And for Helena, 84 degrees with the smoke billowing in the background from the fire. Temperatures right now very hot out towards Glasgow. We're looking at 92 degree temperatures, and I believe it was um, up at Wolf Point. We were looking at 95 degree temperatures. We're seeing 76 in Cutbank, 81 in Bozeman, and 85 in again Lewistown. And all this warm air that's allowing for these thunderstorms to really strengthen. That's where they get their fuel. And on top of the severe thunderstorm uh, threat. We're seeing our winds really picking up over the last 24 hours. Now we've seen almost 60 mile per hour winds in Helena, looking at only 23 in the Great Falls out towards Lewistown 33 in Glasgow 44 and Jordan 40. How though much could we see our winds get? Well, we're seeing right now southwest winds at 35 miles an hour in Helena, 15 in Great Falls, out towards uh, Glasgow only 17. But as we head throughout the next couple of hours, I mean, we could potentially see 90 to 100 mile per hour wind gusts in and around the Helena area, 40 to 50 in Great Falls here in the next couple of minutes, heading into around 10 p.m. tonight, 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gust in Cutbank, 30 to 40 in Helena, 50 to 60 in Great Falls, as well as up towards Haver and Glasgow, continuing throughout the night, right around 3.30 in the morning. We're seeing 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts still in Cutbank, 40 to 50 in Helena, and 10 to 20 in Great Falls, 40 to 50 in Haver, and tomorrow right around 10 a.m., 
If you're going to be going out to maybe uh, running errands or going to church, you're still going to be looking at 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts in Great Falls and 50 to 60 in Cutbank. As far as why we're seeing the weather we are, it's because these two low pressures in Idaho as well as Montana looking at a cold front that is going to be swinging through our area. We're going to be looking at cloud cover moving in tomorrow morning chances for showers and maybe a thunderstorm for Helena in the uh, first part of the day. But then on uh, in the afternoon, we're going to be looking at another round for a few showers and scattered showers and thunderstorms really before we start to see clouds building back in for our day on Monday. So partly sunny on Monday, we're going to be looking at a chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms on Tuesday. On Wednesday, a slight chance for showers. And then on Thursday, again, keeping that slight chance for showers and thunderstorms each and every day. And for our friends in Helena, tomorrow we're going to be looking at showers and thunderstorms likely. And we're going to keep that windy forecast in place with lower temperatures. Don't go away. We'll be back right after this break. Powered by the Montana Television Network. The 530 News continues on Montana's News Leader. A flood of foreclosures and evictions. Experts believe that's what we'll see likely in the coming months as eviction moratoriums end. So what can you do to protect yourself from an eviction or foreclosure during this recession? Chris Conti has some answers. Sheltered in place, shielding her home from the virus. It's my security and my family's protection during this. Sherry Stanley is petrified her home is on the verge of being taken away. So I feel nervous constantly. After a bitter divorce, this 42-year-old fell behind on mortgage payments. Her foreclosure case is still being litigated in court. Sherry thought an eviction moratorium would protect her. But as the signs in her yard suggest, that was not the case. I've been harassed this whole time. People showing up on my property. A few weeks ago, a local realty company showed up and listed Sherry's home for auction even though Massachusetts, where she lives, has halted foreclosures. It makes it scarier because you don't feel settled and you can't depend on anybody because nobody's listening to the law. Making matters worse, many housing courts are closed, meaning tenants don't have any recourse right now. As landlords and banks circumvent court orders in an effort to force tenants and homeowners out. I'm nervous that somebody's going to take our home and we'll have nowhere to go right now during this pandemic, which the law is you can't kick anybody out right now. But during with courts closed, I don't know what to do. In an effort to keep renters informed, nonprofits like the Worcester Anti Foreclosure Team are sending out flyers to let tenants know about their rights. I think people are really scared. Grace Ross oversees the, the group. So if you could make those changes, I would appreciate it. She's been inundated with calls from renters being harassed by landlords even though the CARES Act has a hold on evictions for government-backed loans until July. The most critical thing is to get information about your rights. Currently, 26 states still have some kind of eviction protections in place. Many, though, will run out as soon as emergency declarations end. Grace Ross's advice, start working with your landlord or bank now. It doesn't do a landlord any good to kick someone out and not be able to get a new person in. I think they need to protect if they're going to tell people they're going to protect them. A protection that many Americans are finding out they don't have. In Worcester, Massachusetts, I'm Chris Conti reporting. We'll be right back. Tomorrow we will look at temperatures cooler than the average. The average being 72, we're going to be 65 with showers possible. By Monday, we're going to be looking at partly sunny skies. Showers and thunderstorms move in, though, for Tuesday. And as we take a look at Helena's forecast, 60 degrees tomorrow, 68 on Monday. Chance for showers and thunderstorms, though, Matt, on Tuesday. Yeah, quick dip the update on that Helena fire before you go. So we were told about 50 acres. That was a couple hours ago, around 4 o'clock. Now we're told that the amount uh, the acreage of the fire cannot be determined because of the high winds, low visibility. MTN's Lexi Aguayo is on scene. They're escorting him to get some footage and learn more. He's talking to officials. Um, there will be a meeting at 6.30, virtual Zoom meeting. MTN will be a part of that meeting to learn more, hopefully to find out what the cause is um, and whatever other information we can find for you. So stay tuned to our website, social media. We'll have more on the fire tonight at 10 o'clock, um, and we'll keep you updated as we know more. Thanks for watching.